one chapters five and six of amadis of gaul chapter five how king lisuarte sailing towards great britain took port in the kingdom of scotland and how the child of the sea was made knight by king perion without their knowing each other when king lisuarte heard this embassage he set sail with a great fleet and on their way they put into scotland where he was honourably received by king languiles brisena his wife was with him and their daughter oriana born in denmark and then about ten years old the fairest creature that ever was seen wherefore she was called the one without a peer and because she suffered much at sea it was determined to leave her there right gladly did king languines accept this charge and his queen said believe me i will take care of her like her own mother so lisuarte proceeded and when he arrived at great britain he found those who had disturbed him as in common cases and for this cause he did not send for his daughter and with great trouble that he took he was king at last and he was the best king that had yet been nor was there ever one who better maintained chivalry till king arthur reigned who passed in goodness all kings that were before him the child of the sea was now twelve years old but in stature and size he seemed fifteen and he served the queen but now that oriana was there the queen gave her the child of the sea that he should serve her and oriana said that it pleased her in that word which she said the child kept in his heart so that he never lost it from his memory and in all his life he was never weary of serving her and his heart was surrendered to her and this love lasted as long as they lasted for as well as he loved her did she also love him but the child of the sea who knew nothing of her love thought himself presumptuous to have placed his thoughts on her and dared not to speak to her and she who loved him in her heart was careful not to speak with him more than with another but their eyes delighted to reveal to the heart what was the thing on earth that they loved best and now the time came that he thought he could take arms if he were knighted and this he greatly desired thinking that he would do such things that if he lived his mistress should esteem him with this great desire he went to the king who was at that time in the garden and fell upon his knees before him and said sire if it please you it is time for me to receive knighthood how child of the sea said languines are you strong enough to maintain knighthood it is easy to receive but difficult to maintain and he who would keep it well so many and so difficult are the things he must achieve that his heart will often be troubled and if through fear he forsakes what he ought to do better is death to him than life with shame not for this replied he will i fail to be a knight my heart would not require it if it were not in my will to accomplish what you say and since you have bred me up complete what you ought to do in this if not i will seek some other who will do it the king who feared lest he should do this replied child of the sea i know when this is fitting better than you can know and i promise you to do it and your arms shall be got ready but to whom do you think to go to king perion who they say is a good knight and has married the sister of your queen i would tell him how i was brought up by her and then he would willingly fulfil my desire now said the king be satisfied it shall be honourably done and he gave orders that the arms should be made and sent to acquaint gandales thereof when gandales heard this he greatly rejoiced and sent a damsel with the sword and the ring and the letter and wax which he had found in the ark the child of the sea was with oriana and the ladies of the palace discoursing when a page entered and told him there was a stranger damsel without who brought presents for him and would speak with him and she who loved him heard this her heart trembled and if any one had been looking at her they might have seen how she changed and she told the child of the sea to let the damsel come in that they might see the presence accordingly she entered and said sir child of the sea your good friend gandales salutes you as the man who loves you much and sends you this sword and this ring and this wax and he begs you will wear this sword while you live for his sake he took the presence and laid the ring and the wax in his lap while he unrolled the sword from a linen cloth in which it was wrapped wondering that it should be without a scabbard meantime oriana took up the wax and said i will have this not thinking that it contained anything it would have better pleased him if she had taken the ring which was one of the finest in the world while he was looking at the sword the king came in and asked him what he thought of it it seems a goodly one sir said he but i marvel wherefore it had no scabbard it is fifteen years said the king since it had one and taking him by the hand he led him apart and said you would be a knight and you know not whether of right you should be one i therefore tell you all that i know concerning you and with that he told him all that gandales had communicated the child of the sea answered 
I believe this, for that damsel said my good friend Gandales had sent her, and I thought she had mistaken, and should have called him my father. But I am nothing displeased herewith, except that I know not my parents, nor they me, for my heart tells me I am well born. And now, sir, it behooves me more to obtain knighthood, that I may win honour and the praise of prowess, since I know not my lineage, and am like one whose kindred are all dead. When the king heard him speak thus, he believed that he would prove a hardy and good knight. As they were thus conversing, a knight came to inform the king that King Perion had arrived. Languines went to welcome him, as one who knew how to do honour to all, and after they had saluted, he asked how it was that he came so unexpectedly. I came to seek for friends, replied Perion, of whom I have more need than ever, for King Abias of Ireland wars upon me, and is now with all his power in my country, and Dagonel, his half-brother, is with him, and both together have collected such a multitude against me, that I stand in need of all my friends and kinsmen, for I have lost many of my people in battle already, and others whom I trusted have failed me. Brother, replied Languines, your misfortunes grieve me not a little, and I shall aid you the best I can. Agriez, who was already knighted, now came and knelt before his father, saying, Sir, I beg a boon. The which being granted, for King Languines loved him as himself, he pursued, I request that I may go to defend the queen my aunt. And I grant it, answered Languines, and you shall be as honorably and well accompanied as may be. This while had the child of the sea been looking earnestly at Perdion, not as his father, for of that he knew nothing, but because of his great goodness in arms, of which he had heard the fame, and he desired to be made a knight by his hand rather than by any man in the world. To attain this purpose he thought best to entreat the queen, but he found her so sad that he would not speak to her. In going to where Oriana was, he knelt before her and said, Lady Oriana, could I know by you the cause of the queen's sadness? Oriana's heart leapt at seeing him, whom she most loved before her. And she said to him, Child of the sea, this is the first thing you ever asked of me, and I shall do it with a good will. Our lady, I am neither so bold nor worthy as to ask anything from one like you, but rather to obey what it pleases you to command. What, said she, is your heart so feeble? so feeble that in all things towards you it would fail me except in serving you like one who is not his own but yours mine said she since when since it pleased you how since it pleased me remember lady the day whereon your father departed the queen took me by the hand and leading me before you said i give you this child to be your servant and you said it pleased you and from that time i have held and hold myself yours to do your service yours only, that neither I nor any other while I live can have command over me. That word, said she, you took with a meaning that it did not bear, but I am well pleased that it is so. Then he was overcome with such pleasure that he had no power to answer, and Oriana, who now saw the whole power that she had over him, went to the queen and learned the cause of her sadness, and returning to the child of the sea told him that it was for the queen her sister, who now was so distressed? He answered, If it pleased you that I were a knight, with your leave I would go and aid the queen her sister. With my leave? And what without it would you not then go? No, said he, for without the favour of her whose it is, my heart could not sustain itself in danger. Then Oriana smiled and said, Since I have gained you, you shall be my knight, and you shall aid the sister of the queen. The child of the sea kissed her hand. The king, my master, has not yet knighted me, and I had rather it should be done by King Perion at your entreaty. In that, said she, I will do what I can, but we must speak to the princess Mabilia, for her request will avail with her uncle. Mabilia, who loved the child of the sea with pure love, readily agreed. Let him go, said she, to the chapel of my mother, armed at all points, and we and the other damsels will accompany him. And when King Perion is setting off, which will be done before daybreak, I will ask to see him, and then will he grant our request, for he is a courteous knight. When the child of the sea heard this, he called Gandaline and said to him, My brother, take all my arms secretly to the queen's chapel, for this knight I think to be knighted, and because it behooves me to depart right soon, I would know if you wish to bear me company. Believe me, quoth Gandaline, never with my will shall I depart from ye. The tears came in the eyes of the child at this, and he kissed him in the face, and said, 
do now what I told you. Gandalin laid the arms in the chapel while the queen was at supper, and when the cloths were removed, the child of the sea went there and armed himself all, save his head and his hands, and made his prayers before the altar, beseeching God to grant him success in arms and in the love which he bore his lady. When the queen had retired, Oriana and Mabilia went with the other damsels to accompany him, and Mabilia sent for Perdion as he was departing. And when he came, she besought him to do what Oriana, the daughter of King Lisuarte, should request. Willingly, said King Perdion, for her father's sake. Then Oriana came before him, and when he saw her, how fair she was, he thought there could not be found more equal in the world. She begged a boon, and it was granted. Then, said she, make this my gentleman knight, and she showed him to Perdion kneeling before the altar. The king saw how fair he was, and approaching him said, Would you receive the order of knighthood? I would, in the name of God, then, and may he order it that it be well bestowed on you, and that you may grow in honour as you have in person. Then putting on the right spur, he said, Now are you a knight, and may receive the sword. The king took the sword and gave it to him, and the child girded it on. Then, said Perdion, according to your manner and appearance, I would have performed the ceremony with more honours, and a trust in God that your fame will prove that so it ought to have been done. Mabilia and Oriana then joyfully kissed the king's hand, and he, commending the child of the sea to God, went his way. But he, who was now a knight, took leave of the damsels who had watched with him, and Oriana, whose heart was bursting, though she dissembled that, led him aside, and said, Child of the sea, I judge of you too well to think you are the son of Gandales. If you know anything of this, tell me. So he told all that from King Languines he had heard, and she, greatly rejoicing thereat, commended him to God. He found Gandalin at the palace door, holding his lance and his shield and his horse, and he mounted and went his way, unseen for any, for it was yet night. They rode on till the noon was past, and then refreshed themselves with the food that Gandalin had brought, and when evening came, they heard in the woods the voice as of a man in great suffering, wherefore the knight rode presently that way. He found a knight dead, and hard by him another sorely wounded, and a woman upon him who made him so cry out for she was thrusting her hands into his wounds help me sir knight he cried and let me not be murdered by this wretch the woman at that fled and the child of the sea alighted and took the wounded man whom had swooned away in his arms and so dealt with him that he revived and cried take me where i may have some help for my soul for i am slain take courage sir knight said the child and tell me how this happened it is that wicked woman, he replied, whom I took to wife, and last night she forsook me to go with another, whom ye now see lying dead, and after I had slain him I told her that I would forgive her, if she would dishonour me no more, but she, seeing how weak I was with the loss of blood, fell upon me, and thrust her hands into the wounds to kill me, so that well I perceive I cannot long live. Therefore I beseech ye, good sir, help me to a hermitage that is near at hand and they laid him upon Gandalin's horse, and went towards the hermitage. But the woman, who had a little before sent for her three brothers to save her from her husband, met them now, whom she had no sooner espied than she exclaimed, Help me, for that wicked knight who goes yonder is carrying away my husband, whom he hath well nigh slain. Follow him and kill him, and the man with him who is as bad as he. This said that her guilt might not be known, and she went on her palfrey to show them the way. The child of the sea, by this, had left the wounded knight and was proceeding, when they overtook him and cried, Stop, traitor! You lie, replied the child. I am no traitor, and shall defend myself well from treason. Come on, like knights. He broke his lance upon the first, whom he drove to the earth, both him and his horse, whence they could neither arise, then took his shield from Gandalin, and so played his part that he lightly discomfited the twain. The woman attempted to fly, but Gandalin stayed her. Then, said one of the brethren, We know not, sir, whether this battle hath been for right or wrong, and he then related what his sister had told him. The child blessed himself at hearing this, and told them how she had murdered her husband, and he took them to mercy on condition that they should carry her and her husband to King Languines, and tell the king that a knight who had that day sallied out had sent them to be at his judgment. End of chapter 5 Chapter 6 how Udiganda gave the lance to the child of the sea, and how he delivered King Perion from those who would have slain him. Then the child of the sea gave his shield and helmet to Gandalin and proceeded. 
They had not ridden far when they saw a damsel coming off her palfrey, and she had in her hand a lance with its belts, and presently another damsel, who came by a different path, joined her, and they both came on communing together. When they reached him, she with the weapon said, Take this lance, sir, and I tell you that within three days it will stand ye in good stead, as therewith ye shall deliver from death the house whence ye are descended. He, wondering at her words, replied, how damsel can a house live or die she answered so it will be in this lance i give you for some services which from you i expect the first whereof shall be when you shall do an honour to one of your friends whereby he shall be put into the worst danger that any knight hath been these ten years space damsel said he such honour if god please i will not do my friend she answered so it will be and spurred her palfrey and departed. Now this was Urdiganda the unknown. The other damsel who remained then said to him, Sir knight, I am from a strange land, and if it please you, will abide with you till the third day, and defer my journey to my mistress. Whence are you? said he. From Denmark. And he knew this was truth, for he remembered the language of Oriana in her childhood. Then, said he, if ye please, damsel, to go with me, I will defend ye to my power, but I pray ye, know ye that other damsel? Never till this meeting she told me that Lance was for the best knight in the world, and desired me, after her departure, to tell ye that she bare you great affection, and that her name was Uganda the Unknown. Ah, God, quoth he, how unfortunate I am, and I cannot find her against her will. And thus devising they went until the dark evening overtook them. At this time they met a squire, who asked where they were going. "'Along the road,' replied the child. "'That,' quoth he, "'is true. But if you mean to have lodging, ye must turn aside from it. There is no dwelling-place near, except my father's castle, and there shall ye be well entertained.' And this the squire did, because far on was a castle, which they could not pass without doing battle, and he had never seen the combat of knight-errants. So they were well served that night, and on the morrow when they departed, the squire said he would bring them again into their way, as far as a castle which they must pass. After riding about three leagues, they saw the castle, and a goodly one it seemed, for before it ran a river, and it had a drawbridge, whereon was a fair tower at the end. The damsel and the squires rode first, but as soon as the damsel attempted to pass, six fellows armed with cuirasses and headpieces seized her bridle and told her to swear or she would die swear what quoth she swear never to show favour to your lover till he promised you to help king abias against king perion with that she cried aloud for help and the child of the sea caught a hatchet from one of the ruffians and felled him the rest fell upon him one he sliced to the eyes another from the shoulder to the ribs seeing this their comrades fled now damsel proceed quoth he and evil be to them that encourage such villainy but now as they went on a great noise was heard in the castle and the damsel told him to take his arms fear not said he where ladies are so evil entreated there can be no man worth anything sir quoth she i dare not go on unless you take your arms so he took them and proceeded through the gate of the castle where they met a squire lamenting out loud ah god they are killing the best knight in the world for not taking an oath which he cannot keep the child of the sea passed him and saw king pedion beset by two knights and ten halberders who had slain his horse and now assailed him on all sides crying swear or die traitors quoth the child you shall die for him with that they called to the porter to shut the castle gate and half of them leaving king pedion fell upon the knight but soon had he slain the two knights and rode among the halberders scattering them till with the king's help they were all slain except some few who got upon the walls but then the child alighted and followed them and some in their fear leapt down two only fled into a chamber where lay an old knight so aged that he could not rise who cried out from whom are ye flying villains from a knight who hath played the devil in your castle killed both your nephews and all your comrades the child of the sea had followed them and bade them show him their master or he would slay them and when he saw the old man in bed he blessed himself and said 
thou old wretch, art thou on the very edge of the grave, and dost thou maintain such customs? With these words he made offer to smite off his head. Ah, mercy, quoth the old man. Swear, then, said the knight, that thou, while thou livest, no more such treason may be maintained here. Wheretofore the old man right gladly took his oath. Now tell me, wherefore hast thou heretofore kept this custom? For the love of King Abias of Ireland, who is my nephew, and because I could not aid him with my body, I wish to assist him with such knights errant as pass this way. False villain, quoth the child of the sea. With that he kicked down the bed, and the old man with it, and commending him to all the devils, he left him, and went down into the court, and took the horse of one of the knights whom he had slain, and leading it to King Perion, cried, Mount, sir, for I little like this place, and those who are in it. Then they departed. The child of the sea would not take off his helmet, lest the king should know him, and when Perion asked who he was that had succored him in such need, he persisted in concealing himself till the damsel took his helmet off. Then presently Perion knew him, that it was the youth whom he had knighted at the lady's request, and embracing him, he said, Truly I know now you better than before. Sir, quoth the child, I knew you well, that it was you who gave me the order of knighthood, wherewith so please it God, I shall serve you in your wars in Gaul. They came at length to a double way, and the knight asked Perion which way he took. The left, answered the king for it leadest to my country. God have you then in his keeping, quoth the child, for I must take the right. Then, said Perion, I pray you remember your promise. So took they leave of each other. The damsel then said to the child of the sea, Sir knight, I have hitherto kept ye company, because the damsel who gave you the lance said she brought it for the best knight in the world, and surely I have seen so much that I know it was a truth. Now I will shape my course towards my lady. And who is she? Oriana, the daughter of King Lisuare. But when he heard his lady named, his heart trembled in such sort that he had nigh fallen from his horse. Gandaline, who saw him totter, ran to him, and he cried, My heart faileth me. The damsel, thinking some sudden sickness was the cause thereof, would have had him unarmed, but he told her it was needless, and that he was liable to such seizures. Then they parted company, the damsel and the squire, towards the court of Languinese, and the child of the sea and Gandaline, going where fortune guided them. Two days they rode without adventure, and on the third, about midday, arrived in the sight of a goodly castle that belonged to Galpano, the most valiant knight in these parts, but who followed the service of the wicked enemy, instead of the lords, who had endowed him with strength and courage. He had a custom to make all ladies and damsels that passed his castle enter in, where forcibly he took his will of them, and made them swear never to take other lovers than him, which, if they refused, he beheaded them, and what knights came he made combat with his two brethren, whom, if they conquered, he would force the conqueror to deal with himself, who was the strongest knight in all that country, and he made them swear to call themselves the conquered by Galpano, else he cut off their heads and when they had sworn, he stripped them of all they had, and sent them away afoot. End of chapter 6